everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. It's that time of year again, i.e. the time of year when I remember to do one of these videos. My spring favourites! I always start with the instrument that I'm enjoying playing most at the moment. You may remember a few months back I did a review video of the Mollenhauer Modern Recorders. Uh, yep, yeah, I ended up buying one. <laughs> trying it out I fell in love with its really strong low register, its flexible high register and of course this key that means you can play the low E. When I play contemporary music on an alto I often feel like I've not got enough power and I really want to go like but a baroque recorder is a bit too... so I think this is something that can give me the aggression I need. You also have this key that means you don't have to use your knee for the high notes. I actually like using my knee so I don't know if I'm going to be fully converted. In case you're wondering I got the one with modern voicing rather than baroque because I'm going to use it for contemporary music and it's in the Grenadilla which was a bit heavier wood. In January I had a concert where I was playing with double bass, cello, bass clarinet and a singer and this worked really well for playing in that kind of 442 higher modern pitch blending with the other instruments but still being loud enough to compete with you know a bass clarinet. That was the moment when I was like yes. A piece of music that I found or I felt fit surprisingly well on this instrument is the Renaissance piece Upon La Mi Re by attributed to Thomas Preston. This is a really beautiful trio where you have the two bass parts going do 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 and then the top part is doing all these diminutions over the top. Yeah this is a modern recorder but somehow I felt like it's big open sound fit and the piece repeatedly goes down to an E so it was really nice to be able to you know hit that note every time. I've ended up playing this piece in three ways, one with a loop station where I can record the bass lines and then play on top, uh, I'm trying it out with my trio axolot and also in a new project with a harpist and a percussionist, more on that uh, well I'll tell you a bit more about that now actually. Another piece that I've been trying out in this harp percussion trio is something that I think you'll like as well. It's actually the oldest surviving piece of written music ever. It's from the second century BC and it was found written on a stone tablet in Sekulos in Greece. The translation is something very roughly like, as long as you live, shine, have no regrets because life is short and time takes its toll something completely different. The DVD, the recorder collection of Franz Bruchen. Recorder nerds, listen up. You've got Franz Bruchen, who was basically the father of modern recorder playing. He had a phenomenal recorder collection. Case Bucher and Walter von Hauer, two other phenomenal recorder players that were Franz's students and now recorder masters in their own right. Um, have recorded this whole DVD where they perform music on each of Franz's recorders. I mean these are original historical instruments. We don't have to guess how they would have sounded, we can listen to how they sound and there is a whole booklet with loads of information and even diagrams of each instrument. Oh, if you're like the casual recorder player who stumbled upon this channel and is like hmm what's this? This is about as nerdy as it gets but I love it. <laughs> At the moment I'm doing a lot of ensemble teaching, going to different festivals or events and conducting ensembles. Something I found invaluable for this work is the finishing touch of ensemble playing by Bart Spanhover. Ah, oh, This is so useful. The first half is ensemble playing techniques which is really helpful if you play in an ensemble and the second half is 
basically how to teach a recorder ensemble. I was reading this like, oh my god. <laughs> it has repertoire lists, it has a history of recorder ensembles, solving technical problems, goals in the lesson, making music, tuning. Especially if you are someone who maybe conducts a small local orchestra and you're thinking, how can I take my group to the next level? This is how. The next item in my list is something I actually bought yesterday. <laughs> I got new recorder bags. I am utterly ashamed to show you how I'm currently storing my recorders. A lot of them don't have cases. Uh, I'm always swapping them about when I need to take one somewhere. It's not an ideal situation. Um, so I was at a recorder festival this weekend and I picked up three recorder bags. They are handmade by Danielle Netch of Netch Recorders and they come in all different sizes. Um, you can get ones where you can store 10 instruments. This is my favourite. It's kind of like my grandma's favourite Laura Ashley style fabric and I'm using this one for my modern alto. I picked up just a really simple little velvety one for one of my sopranos that's a million years old and the case disappeared a long time ago. And then this one is for my Ganassi soprano, which I especially like because it colour coordinates. I mean, this is important. I'll put all the contact information in the description as with everything in this video, and you can actually order custom recorder cases. I might have placed one order already. Next up in my list of favourites is Splendor. What's that? <laughs> Splendor is a music hub in the centre of Amsterdam with two concert halls, artist studios, places where you can record and rehearse and just create music. It's run by 50 musicians from Amsterdam and spoiler alert, I am one of the musicians. A lot of us come from a classical background but we also have jazz musicians, world musicians, more experimental, electronic and our aim is to be creative and independent. The reason I'm mentioning this is if you are passing through Amsterdam and you want to see some really cool, interesting concerts, Splendor is a good place to check out. And this is something cool. If you want to support Splendor, you can become a member and you get 50 concerts per year for free. 50 concerts a year for free. <laughs> what does this cost? 10 euros a month, and if you're under 30 years old, five euros a month. It's like a little bit more than a euro per concert. So yeah, this one is a little bit of a plug for my own thing, but if you live in the Netherlands or you're passing through and you wanna see a concert or you just wanna support this music, uh, please consider dropping by, having a drink, um, or becoming a member of Splendor. And the last thing on my list are these musical cubes. One of my friends got us this as a gift for Bodil, my daughter who is almost two, my god. Um, they are so sweet. A lot of musical children's toys make you want to smash things, but these are beautifully made and just... Each one has a different percussive sound and they're beautifully painted and they're stackable and buildable or knockdownable. And Bodiel and I have really enjoyed these. No, mm, oh, they're so cute. Uh, well, that's it. That was it, Spring Favourites 2020. What have you been enjoying, playing, listening to, doing? Let me know in the comments. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. Over here is the Team Recorder Patreon where you can choose to support the channel. Thank you so much. And up here is my last favourites video. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!